This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. When living out our dreams to the fullest, we may find ourselves unexpectedly in situations that test the limits of survival. I'm William Shatner. Tonight on Rescue 911, two stories of men and women whose bravery and caring inspire us all. We begin on October 2nd, 1990, along the windswept coast of Queensland, Australia, as people gathered for a sunrise hot air balloon ride. Some of the footage in the story was taped as the events unfolded. A balloon flight is is a once in a lifetime experience. And the last thing that you want is for something frightening to happen. It was the first time the two scheduled passengers, Alex Steele and Judith Goodwin, had ever been in a balloon. Alex's wife, Sylvia, wasn't planning to go because she had a fear of heights. Are you sure you don't want to go? What the hell? I'm being up. Roger said, I have taken people up before who have been frightened of heights and they've thoroughly enjoyed it. And I thought, oh, why not? Be daring. We weren't aloft very long and we knew that things weren't right. Instead of going straight up, we took off towards the sea. Roger's wife, Ruth, also a balloon pilot, wasn't flying that day. The weather had changed, I think, very dramatically. There's a, a saying in ballooning that it's better to be on the ground wishing you were up there than up there wishing you are on the ground. Well, this is it, folks. At the Kulangata Airport, air traffic controller Michael O'Neill received a call from Roger asking for a boat because they were being blown out over the ocean. The balloon was in a stiff breeze. It can't stop, it just has to track the wind. They had no life preservers, no, nothing for a marine landing, and it was moving quite quickly out to sea. When a hot air balloon carrying four passengers was blown out to sea by storm winds, both the local police and the Southport Volunteer Air Sea Rescue Team sent boats to search for the missing balloon. There's four people on board. Senior Rescue Coordinator Greg Turner and his partner Russell Stewart were dispatched. We had no visual contact with the balloon, so we uh, started heading in the general direction of where the balloon should be. The balloon had a big head start on us. Eventually, it was going to ditch into the ocean, so our response had to be very quick. It was 
going to be hang on all the way because this was going to be like a, an offshore powerboat race ride out to the job. So two shark hats been the balloon was at least 10 miles out to sea by then. Roger was running out of fuel and he was starting to go through emergency ditching procedures with his passengers. I can see you in your present position. It wouldn't have been a great feeling to see the coastline uh, slowly but surely merging into the, the west. It adds to the remoteness of it all that basically you're there by yourself. Gold Coast Constable Greg St. Clair was also searching for the balloon. Storm out here, Nev. It was hidden from us by storm cells and you just can't see through them. I was worried at that point that we may be too late, the balloon would be in the water. It's gotta be up in the cloud area, hey? Like... Yeah, definitely, definitely. Greg, keep it going in southeast, mate. Just keep the speed on. We still can't see anything out there. Yeah. A lot of clouds. There was relief in my mind when we first saw the balloon. It was still up. We still had a chance. The balloon had been in the air for more than an hour and was almost 20 miles out to sea by the time the rescue boats caught up with it. They came down so they could verbally talk to us. The canopy was just acting like a big sail. So he was scooting along quite fast. Throw me the rope! Throw it! They dropped us down a landing ribbon. The pilot was informing us that he only had five minutes or so of fuel left to keep the, the balloon aloft. The people on the balloon were quite panicky and you know, calling for help and please rescue us. But we were trying to sort of think, how are we going to do this? This is something that we've never done before. It was obvious from the speed that the balloon was going at that when they struck the water there was going to be problems. So Roger wanted to attempt basically a crash landing on the back of the boat. We had to maintain the speed of the balloon. We kept hold of the landing line and trying to steady it and trying to pull it closer to the craft. But uh, because our boat was pitching up and down quite severely, it made it difficult. Get right up underneath it, you can just go for the back of it. Right. The pilot kept pointing his arm out in the direction he wanted the boat to travel. He was coming down. It was do or die. The boat came off a wave, it hit the basket, knocked it sideways. And then he hit the gas to take himself up a little bit and it didn't work. It hit the wave top so hard, everyone fell on each other. It was just sheer terror. You could see it in their faces. The basket scooped up some water and it slowed down its momentum. The basket at that stage was still doing around about 18 knots. The canopy of the balloon was just pulling it through the water and all these people were trapped. They couldn't get out. The force of the water was way too strong. We thought that we're here to help and these people are going to drown in front of us. I put the boat in as close as I could. We didn't want to crush the people with our boat. Then this lady pushed herself out of the top and she went under the water. She was being dragged, totally submerged. I knew I had to get her, otherwise she wasn't going to make it. The 
Yeah. I just remember coming to the surface with her, and I was I was relieved that I had her in my arms. She was safe. Sylvia Steele was pulled into the police boat. I thought, would I see any of them again? If anything had happened to my husband, I don't think my life would have been worth our living. He's everything to me. We've seen good times, we've seen bad times, but we've always stuck together. There were still three persons on board. One lady in particular was just staring straight at me and screaming for help. Our biggest fear was the whole show was going to sink with the three people right in front of our eyes. lady first and she was quite shaken but the boat was lurching from side to side we yelled and screamed and said come on you know you've got to get yourself out come on come on one more Once we knew that there was nobody else trapped in the basket, we then allowed the balloon just to continue on its way. The job was done. Everyone was alive. The other woman on board got a big smile when the husband saw her. When it comes together and it's a success like that, it makes it all worthwhile for the countless hours that we put in. While Roger the pilot stayed behind to try and salvage his balloon, the others were taken back to shore. Cheers, how you going? Was this your first flight? Yes, first and last. <laughs> but I mean, it's all right. Sylvia, who'd been dragged behind the balloon, escaped with a scraped foot. Her husband, Alec, was treated for a shoulder injury. Judith was physically unharmed, but very shaken. I saw the other lady go under the water and not come up, but, uh, you know, and then I was so frightened that I'd crash my head. It was my daughter's birthday today, and I thought, you know, what if I die on her birthday? She'll I remember it for the rest of her life. Two years have passed, but the memories of their unexpected adventure are still strong. I mean, yeah, Roger tried his hardest to keep us calm, but when that basket hit the water, it was frightening because it hit with such force. My wife was first to get out of the basket, and I couldn't see her. I really honestly thought that uh, she was drowned. Sylvia and I have been married for 14 22 years, and I hope that we've got another 22 years left. It was almost cut short, and that's when I realised how much you have. <laughs> Alex, one in a million. We're both together once again, and personally, I think I'm one hell of a lucky lady. In more ways than one. In lots of ways. I wanted to go up in a balloon ever since seeing Around the World in 80 Days because it looks like one of the most romantic things that you can do. Now, I have a reputation from some people for being um, adventurous. I'm not quite sure whether I deserve that, but uh, as a librarian who's considered to be rather a boring sort of people, uh, I'll swim with it. <laughs> I can't say enough for the rescuers. They were fabulous. They're a mighty fine bunch of guys, and 
I'd just like to say thanks to Virgin fellas. <laughs> I don't think any of us would have been alive today without them. Here's the soft winds, gentle landings, and cheating death one more time. <laughs> 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 <laughs>